And of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Good afternoon, everyone. Brothers and sisters, for the times we have not forgiven, as our Lord commands us to forgive, let's acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these most sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, we commend word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Forgive us our trespasses and bring us to life eternal. Amen.
Could anyone nourish anger against another and expect healing from the Lord? Could anyone refuse mercy to another like himself? Can he seek pardon for his own sins? If one who is but flesh cherishes wrath, who will forgive his sins? Remember your last days, set enmity, enmity aside. Remember death and decay and cease from sin. Think of the commandments. Hate not your neighbor. Remember the Most High's covenant and overlook faults. The word of the Lord.
For this is why Christ died and came to life, that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. The word of the Lord.
today's readings, brothers and sisters, the challenges, the most important Christian obligation, that is to forgive, forgive one another. In Jesus' times, when we see, especially in the New Testament, that Jesus revealed his Father's love and mercy through two wonderful parables. The first, first parable is very familiar to us from Luke, 15th chapter, 11 to 32 verses. It is about the prodigal son. The second parable is today's gospel passage. The unforgiving debtor and the servant, Matthew 18, 23 to 35 verses. Jesus revealed God's mercy and generosity in forgiving. At the same time, he also presented to us the meanness of man's refusal to forgive his brother, a servant. The father and the king in the two parables stand for God, while the elder son and the unforgiving debtor represent us, the humanity, the man. Unfortunately, man continues to live like the elder brother or the unforgiving debtor. Gospel passage today starts with Peter questioning Jesus. Peter asks Jesus, Jesus, if my brother makes a mistake, how many times should I forgive? Seven times? He thought Jesus would say, no Peter, three times enough. <laughs> but he was shocked to hear what Jesus said. No, no Peter, not seven times, but seventy times seven. Even the apostles found difficult to understand and to accept whatever Jesus said about forgiveness. 70 times 7. There is no limit. Continue to forgive. When you see or when somebody asks you to forgive, continue to forgive them. And Jesus, to make the disciples and the listeners to understand, he talks about this parable that we read in the Gospel passage today. They bring him a man who owed him a huge amount the man could not pay it back. But when the king ordered him to sell his wife, his children, himself, all the property that he has, the man falls down at the feet of the king and pleads with him, give me some more time, I will pay back whatever I owe to you. The king knows, really the king knows, that this man has nothing to really pay back whatever he was to me. But because he had compassion on this letter in a particular way, he says, okay, you go home. Your loan, your debt is forgiven. But the debtor on his way, he finds another servant who owes him very little money, very, very little money. Just imagine if the first debtor owed a million dollars. The servant might have been owning, owing about hundred dollars. But this letter, he catches hold of the guy who owes him hundred dollars or so, a small amount, and he demands for the payment, and the servant could not pay immediately because of his poverty and whatever may be the problem. So the debtor seized his fellow servant by the throat, began to choke him, began to throttle him, and had him thrown into prison. Brothers and sisters, the king could forgive huge amount of the debtor, but the debtor could not forgive even a very small amount, maybe hundred denarii or hundred dollars worth, we do not know at the time. But this was reported to the king. And thereupon the king calls the servant. He says, you wicked servant, you wicked servant, 
I cancelled all your debt when you appealed to me. Were you not about then to have pity on your own fellow servant, just I had pity on you? This is what Jesus teaches to his disciples and to us today. And God forgave us time and again so many sins, some of them even mortal sins. We are so happy. But when we have to forgive, maybe one of the family members or the neighbors or the people at work or people that we know, maybe in the school, the office, the church, wherever it is, we find it very hard to reach out and to say, I forgive you. We are ready any time to come and ask God, God forgive me. I do the same. But to forgive my own brother priest, or forgive my bishop, or forgive my family member. It takes maybe years and years to reach out and to forgive. Brothers and sisters, it is not that Jesus taught these parables to his disciples and to us today. He has lived up whatever he taught to us. We all know and he knows that he came here to lay down his life for us. The last moment when Jesus was about to die, they put him on the cross. They stretched his body, hands and legs together, hands stretched out. They hammered the nails into his hands and the feet. They lifted the cross high. He was not dying. And one person, a soldier, pierces his lance to see whether he is still alive or dead. The water and blood they could see flowing down from his side. God the Heavenly Father accepted his death as a perfect sacrifice so that God could forgive the sins of each and every one of us. He did not spare his son Christ Jesus. Even Jesus, before he breathed his last, he asked God, looking at the people who are mocking him, mocking at him, calling him by all names, even piercing at his side, putting those sharp nails into his body, feet and hands. He prayed to the Father, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ, fully human being, like you, like me, like anybody, but he is fully divine. As a human person, he was able to bear all the pain, all the suffering, all the shameful things that we have done on the cross and Calvary for Christ. He was able to take it because his love covered all that we have done. And he still could pray to his father, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they are doing. Brothers and sisters, let us take a chance to reach out and to forgive. There may be so many people in our families, people around us, people whom we know, that we need to forgive. And maybe they need to forgive us. There is no peace among us. There is no spiritual peace between me and between my Heavenly Father between me and between my neighbors. Let us take a chance. We don't lose anything. Jesus says, if you do not forgive your neighbor, it is even hard for God to forgive your sins. And beautifully, he taught us the prayer of our Father. And that our Father, we, every day we say, forgive us our sins as we forgive the others. May God bless us God continue to strengthen us 
to give us courage to reach out to the others and say, I'm sorry, forgive me, or I am forgiving you your sins, whatever it is, whatever it causes. It does not cost more than the life of Christ. He paid a heavy price for us brothers. Nobody can do that. May God continue to bless us, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the wine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice in your hands, for the grace and glory of His name, for our good and good of all the holy church. Look with favor on our supplications, O Lord, and in your kindness accept these, your servants, offerings, that what each has offered the honor of your name, May serve, may serve the salvation of us all through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God through Christ our Lord. Amen. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the force and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end, we a play. the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, 
which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Thank you. 
we call him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to take the shame of my roof, but I only say the word and my soul shall be Let us pray. May the working of this heavenly gift, O Lord, we pray, take possession of our minds and bodies, so that its effects and not our own desires may always prevail in us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We have a special blessing today for our own parishioners of the congregation gathered here who are celebrating their anniversary in the month of September now. We praise you, O Lord. We bless you, Creator of all things, who in the beginning made man and woman, that they might form a communion of life and love. We also give you thanks for graciously blessing the family life of these your servants, so that it might present an image of Christ's union with the Church. Therefore, look with kindness upon them today, and as they have sustained their communion amid joys and struggles, renew their marriage covenant each day, increase their charity, and strengthen in them the bond of peace, so that together with the circle of their children that surrounds them, they may forever enjoy your blessing. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. We have some announcements to make today. Four of our young parishioners will receive Jesus for the first time in the Holy Eucharist next Saturday. Please give them in prayer as they prepare to receive Jesus, our Eucharistic Lord. Next Sunday, September 20th, is Catechetical Sunday, and our religious education program will become virtual. Please keep our catechists in our prayer as they will be catechizing remotely for the first time. And please keep our children in prayer as well that they might learn and live the joy of the gospel. The request of Pope Francis, the 2020 Pontifical Good Friday collection, that serves to preserve most of the shrines connected to the life of Jesus Christ, 
as well as providing personal care to the region's Catholics and operating schools and charitable institutions will be taken up after Mass today. Your generosity to this collection, dear to the Pope's heart, is greatly appreciated. So we have the Holy Communion guidelines, but the distribution of Holy Communion, the line will form along both side lines. Please observe respectful social distancing by waiting in line. And they be attentive at all times to the ship's prop. Masks are to be worn while waiting in line when receiving communion and when leaving the church. Safely remove your mask only once you have received the Eucharist in the hand and step to the side. Then replace the mask once you have consumed the Eucharist. For those wishing to receive on the tongue, kindly wait to be the last to receive. For those receiving on the tongue, please keep your mask on until the priest or deacon says the body of Christ Please replace your mask once you have received. God bless you and thank you. The Lord be with you. The Almighty God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Please come to